really arranged and organized and structured oftentimes. But Julie and I today have chosen to be a little bit disorganized. So we thought we'd show you the process that we go through as artists when we're creating movement or sound. Um, that process, as you heard earlier, is improvisation. Why do we improvise? Because as, as composers and choreographers, modern composers and choreographers, our mission is to share something new for you, it's something that you've never seen before or heard before, or to perhaps take an idea that you're familiar with, a movement or a sound, and have you think about it differently. So that's what we're here to do. Uh, we've created somewhat of a structure. Uh, improvisation, the nice part about it is it actually lets us throw away a lot of expectations. But we did decide to come up with some parameters to work in. So for instance, you may have seen spatial awareness that changed. The first part was just directly across the stage. The second part, we chose to mix it up a little bit, change the timing, the tempo, the feel of the piece. Afterwards, we'll do a couple more little moments, and you may see a conversation, or you may see a leading and following. So those are the ways that we've structured it. I've also brought some steps into the space so that I could have something to respond with to Julie. And those responses, hopefully, will create new steps out of the familiar. So that's what our goal is, to, to create new from the familiar or to create completely new. I, I could actually ask you guys to do this with me. Um, I won't, but I can give you an example. <laughs> um, say I asked you to take your right hand and put it on your left shoulder. And you did that, and I said, OK, great, you all did that, right? Ooh, but how many different ways can you do that, really? Right? <laughs> you, can change, you can change the way it feels. You can change the way uh, the motion involved. <laughs> you can change all kinds of things. So that is, in turn, what this collaboration is doing for me, is I'm taking what Julie's giving me, and I'm responding to it. So how do we approach this improvisation? Well, we have several pieces of this puzzle that are set for us. This stage is a set factor. Our communication between ourselves, we know our relationships, so we understand each other and how to speak to each other while we're performing. And you, the audience, are also a factor of this. You are as much of a part of our performance as we are. And our goal as performers is to break down this barrier between the performer and the audience. And if you took this stage and we built a different stage, it would be a different performance. If we filled this room with a different audience, we would react differently to you. We were acting very well to you right now, a little bit of nerves and all of that. <laughs> so um, the way that we approach the moment of it is to remove the expectation of the end outcome. So that takes an enormous amount of vulnerability we have to remove the fear of the unknown in the moment so, we, so that we can really communicate with each other. And so if we're not chasing the next moment, then we can be available to each other as we're trying to make this magical performance for you. So we as a society tend to have this bar of where we are capable of performing to and where we know we can excel at what we're doing. And our goal as performers is to remove that bar and to go past it into this unknown space where we don't know what's going to happen. We have to remove our fear of making mistakes and be vulnerable so that we can actually have a real interaction with you because that is the most human place where we have to communicate. And so by removing that bar and going for the place where we don't know what's going to happen, that is a space where change and growth and innovation truly happens. 